Alrighty folks, hello and welcome back to Math 3108. In today's class, we are going to continue on the study of what we began last class, which was dealing with congruence class arithmetic. But on top of that today, we're going to add on irreducibility, which I'm talking about more in terms of the, the polynomial that we are going to be playing around with and what an irreducible polynomial or what effect that irreducible polynomial will have on the set of congruence classes modulo P, where P is that irreducible polynomial. So this is what we're getting into today. So we'll begin off with a theorem, but let's just take a, a, a step aside and remember where we ended last class. So we ended last class on an example. We were looking at the addition and multiplication table of Z mod 2 adjoint X with the polynomial X squared plus X. And what we saw is inside of that multiplication table, we had a subring of something that was isomorphic to Z mod 2. And what I said last class is we're going to show how we can relate these two things. So that's where this theorem is going to pick up. So for this theorem, let f be a field, and p of x is going to be a non-constant polynomial in f adjoint x. Then the set f adjoint x mod p of congruence class modulo p is a commutative ring with identity. Now, furthermore, f adjoint x mod p contains the subfield f star that is isomorphic to f. So if we think of the, the last class, that subfield um, f star, that gave us congruence classes of 0 and 1, but they were mod p, they weren't mod 2. So they were isomorphic to z mod 2, but they weren't exactly what we wanted. So let's begin by, by proving this theorem first. So for our theorem here, we're going to let f star be the subset of f adjoint x mod p of x consisting of the congruence classes all the constant polynomials. So we define F star here. Again, this is a set of all the congruence classes of A. Um, this is, of course, going to be mod P. So I'll put that down there for now, but most of the time I'm going to, to leave that out when we, we have an idea or we know exactly what the, the congruence class we're dealing with is. If we're unsure, I'll always write it in, but if we're sure, I'll just leave that out for the sake of, of clarity. Um, and A has to be an element of F, not F and joint X, it's of the, the original field. All right, so what do we want to do here? Um, Again, the whole theorem is um, if we have f being a field, a non-constant polynomial in f of x, then the set f adjoint x mod p of congruence classes module p is a commutative ring with identity. So we are going to need to show that. Um, and again, with that f adjoint x mod p containing a subring f prime that is isomorphic to f. So we got two parts that we really need to, to show here. So the first thing that we're going to show is the, the f uh, star. So I think I said F prime, it's F star. I want to be able to show that that is going to be a subring. So to show F star, is a subring of, just making sure I have this all on the page there, perfect, of F adjoint X mod P we have the following. And this is basically from our, our definition from the, the last class. So if I have an A 
plus a B. This gives us an A plus B. And A, B. Oops. Or the class A and class B time or is equal to class A, B. And these are right again by the definition that we, we gave last class. So by this, we can say the subset F star is closed under addition and multiplication Now we also have to show that the, the other properties are in fact true. We have to have the zero in there. We have to have the one in there. And obviously this comes directly from the fact that F is already a field to begin with. Um, so the congruence class of zero mod P, that's going to be in there. This is going to be acting as our zero element. And the congruence class of 1 mod P is going to act as our identity. Yeah, majority of the work is already done. We haven't finished proving that this is, in fact, a, a commutative subring, but we have the basic work there. I'll leave it as a, an exercise for you to continue to play around with. So just verify all other properties. All right, so um, we have it being a commutative ring with identity. Um, again, once you you show the the last little parts there, so we want to now show that f uh, of x, um, oh sorry, f adjoint x mod p contains a subring f prime that is isomorphic to f. So that's what we need to to do first. So we need to show something's going to be isomorphic. We're going to need a mapping inside of there. So we'll define the map. say phi, which is going to map f to f star by the following. So I'll have phi of a is going to equal to the congruence class of a modulo p and this is trivial to show so I'll, again I'll leave this as an exercise for you that this is a surjective mapping. So what we need to be able to show for this to be an isomorphism, it has to be surjective, it has to be injective, um, it has to be a homomorphism. So let's show the fact of this being a homomorphism. So we'll take phi of a plus b. Well, what is this equal to by our mapping here? This tells us this is the congruence class of A plus B mod P, which we know again from the basic arithmetic that we, we got into the last class. This is just equal to the congruence class of A plus the congruence class of B, which again, by the definition of mapping, is just phi of A plus phi of B. So it preserves, or the mapping preserves addition. Now we just need to also show that it preserves multiplication. So phi of A times B. Again, by the definition, this is just congruence class of AB. And again, by the properties that we showed last class, this is just congruence class of A times the congruence class of B, which is equal to, again, by our definition of the mapping here, this is phi of A times phi of B.
All right, so we have surjective, we have a homomorphism. Now we just need to show that these two things are isomorphic to one another. Sorry, not isomorphic, injective. And then that will give us the, the isomorphism. So let me just move this over a bit here. So for injective, well, let's suppose that 5a is equal to 5b. Which again, by the definition of our mapping, this is the congruence class of a mod p um, is equal to the congruence class of b mod p. Which again, by our definition, is equal to, or uh, is the same thing as saying that a is equivalent to b mod p. Now, if this is true, this means that P divides the difference between A and B. So P of X divides A minus B. Now, one thing to, to note here is when we originally made our assumption in the, the theorem here, we said that P of X is a non-constant polynomial. So the degree of this has to be greater than or equal to 1. Now, what are A and B? Now, we're taking A and B from, from F, not F adjoint X. So these have degree 0. So I'm saying here, and this is where, the, um, where we're going to show that uh, A has to equal B, is that I'm trying to say that something that has degree greater than or equal to 1 can divide something that has degree of 0. Well, that's only going to be true in, in one case. So note, degree P of X greater than or equal to 1, and degree of A minus B is equal to 0. So this is only going to be true Um, yeah. so P of X dividing A minus B, well, this is only going to be true. So this is an if and only if here, A minus B is equal to zero. Because then I can take zero and I can multiply that by P of X. And that's a different way of being able to write zero here. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to, to do that. So if this is true, then this is true if and only if A is equal to B. So we're supposing that the, the image of A and B are the same, and this is true if and only if, well, we're starting at exactly the same spot. So we have injective. So we have injective, surjective, homomorphism. It's an isomorphism. So thus, phi is a mapping F to F star is an isomorphism. All right, so this theorem shows that um, F adjoint X mod P contains a subring that is in fact an isomorphic copy to F or copy of F. So it's not exactly F, but it's isomorphic to F. 